Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So what do I have for you today my friends? Well we're going to kick things off regarding a little something, AMD Rome. So what we have here is the Finnish IT Centre for Science or CSC have announced that they have a supercomputer incoming that is going to be utilizing over 3000 yes 3000 of the 64 core epic rome processor and that this would result in a staggering 200,000 cores and this should actually offer a peak performance of around 6.4 petaflops now this isn't the only thing they have in store for their plans to improve what they have going on in terms of high performance computing we have the first stage, which is going to actually involve Intel Cascade Lake Xeon processors, and then the second phase is, of course, going to focus around these Epic Rome processors, and this is going to be significantly more powerful, that being the entire supercomputer. What are they actually planning on using this supercomputer for, I hear you ask? Well, according to a report from HPC Wire, they are planning to use it to, quote, help with climate research, quantum mechanics, life sciences, fusion energy and many other domains and there is an announcement in the link in the description below this video but it is unfortunately all in Finnish. Now unsurprisingly this particular move isn't exactly going to be cheap this is going to cost them around 44.2 million dollars or 37 million euros for not only the hardware but obviously the training to actually use it so they are betting quite a lot on the epic Rome processors of course, we learned a fair bit about not too long ago. But we have another topic for you next, of course, and this time it's actually something from Intel. And what you have here is a rather large multi-year expansion plan in Oregon, Ireland and Israel from Intel. And we have a bit of a statement here as to what's going on here from Dr. Anna B. Kelleher, the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Manufacturing and Operations over at Intel. That title just rolls right off the tongue, I'm sure you can agree. Um, basically, she is saying that this is sort of part of Intel's plans to go from just being fairly focused on PCs to be more focused on data. Now I have I've spoken numerous times as I'm sure Paul has as well, but how important the data sort of market is for both AMD and Intel. That is really where the big money is, at least currently. So what does she actually have to say regarding their plans? She said, quote, this year, we raised our capital expenditures forecast and put that money to work expanding our 14NM manufacturing capacity to increase supply. We also made good progress on the previously announced schedule for Fab 42 fit out in Arizona, and we made the decision to locate development of a new generation of storage and memory technology and a manufacturing plant in New Mexico. Looking ahead, we are now in the early planning stage for manufacturing site expansions in Oregon, Ireland and Israel, with multi-year construction activities expected to begin in 2019. In the weeks and months ahead, we're working through discussions and permitting with local government and communities. It is important to note that site expansion and related investment were taken in stages and we are always subject to change based on business, economics and other factors. So they are being rather aggressive here to say the least. Now obviously we've talked before about how they're trying to expand their 14NM manufacturing capacity and that is still something they are going to be trying to do because even after 10NM finally gets off, gets off the ground and we start to see, you know, consumer level products for 10nm in terms of like the you know, mainline desktop processors that sort of thing they are still going to be making 14nm processors and, and obviously going to be seeing it you know for you know coffee lake and the refreshes and all this sort of stuff and obviously cascade lake is still based on it and all this other stuff so 14nm is still going to be a thing even after that happens so intel are not messing around and as well as expanding its own manufacturing capability they are also are going to be sort of utilizing more technologies where it makes sense for them as a business of course so interesting stuff as i said intel are not playing around when it comes to their investment as to their future so what do we have next for you well we actually have something from jdec so as you probably know jdec are the sort of leader in the development of standards for the industry and they have updated the hbm standard 
So what we have here is an update to the JES D235 high bandwidth memory DRAM standard. So obviously this is used in all sorts of applications and for this particular standard was developed and updated with support from quote leading GPU and CPU developers to extend the system bandwidth growth curve beyond levels supported by traditional discrete packaged memory. So what do we actually see in this particular update? Well, we see an increase in the per pin bandwidth to 2.4 GBPS and also adds a new footprint option to actually make room for 16 GB layer and 12 high configurations for high identity components and also adds a few options for these new configurations and there are some more clarifications throughout the document to address test features and compatibility across these various devices. So essentially what we have here is a bit of a buff or boost, if you prefer that word, to the specs of HBM2. So let's move on, shall we, to our next topic. Now we're actually going to move over to a couple of pieces of gaming news for you today, and unfortunately the absurdity continues with Fallout 76 on the next one. I mean, I'll be the first to admit that this game was never really my thing. Like when it was first announced, and I saw it was like a multiplayer thing, I was like, eh, not really for me, but, you know, have fun, enjoy. You know, there's plenty of more than enough games for me to play that are my thing. I've got too many games to play as it is, so, you know, you do you, hun, do you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, but since this is launched, it has been, quite frankly, a mess. And if you've been enjoying it despite that, more power to you. But numerous people have been, shall we say, rather displeased. And obviously, this management, the mismanagement, should I say, of certain aspects, like the whole canvas bag situation, hasn't really helped things. And uh, the rather, shall we say, ridiculous prices for some of the in-game items is not exactly helping either. So, what we have here is we have some very expensive holiday items that you can buy, buy within the game. So we have a holiday emote bundle. Um, which is 1,200 atoms actually reduced from 2,400. We also have Mr. and Mrs. Claude, Claus outfits, excuse me, for 2,000 atoms down from 3,000. And then there's a Red Rocket Mega Sign for 1,400. So in total, if you wanted to buy all three of these, this would be about 4,600 atoms or $40. $40, which could buy, you know, the actual game again. Or what would actually be, probably be better is a different game as well instead you know now obviously you can earn atoms in game but obviously they are rather slow and painful to get now obviously these are extra cosmetic things these aren't things that give you any advantage in game or anything like that but i still just this just leaves a bad taste in my mouth is is the problem like if you want to buy it you spend your money however you want you know, if you want to spend it on this or you want to spend it on building a fortress out of cardboard for your cat, you do you. Honestly, what you do with your money is up to you, but that still doesn't mean it doesn't just give that sort of like, really, Bethesda? Really? This this is what you've decided to do, given the huge criticism surrounding this game that, in my opinion, is highly deserved and all the backlash surrounding it. You know, having such ridiculously high priced cosmetic items is not exactly helping. And there's even rumblings that there's loot crates going to be coming to the game as well. So, yeah. Fun, fun, fun continues for anyone still playing Fallout 76 or who anyone, anyone, who, excuse me, who was once a Fallout fan but perhaps has now become a touch jaded and to be honest if you're in that position i don't blame you at all so we're going to finish things up with something from the nintendo switch as what we have here is mpd data from the month of november and what we actually see here is that nintendo are continuing to do really really well for themselves and are just showing that again the switch is just a really nice machine now again the mpd group as i've stated many times is for the us only however it is still showing that the nintendo switch is the fastest selling console of this generation in the United States. So since its launch back in March of last year to obviously November of 2018, when this report was created for, we see sales of more than 8.7 million units. And they've also confirmed 
that Nintendo is the top selling publisher for the current year and they have had some really nice releases this year to be fair obviously we've had Super Smash Bros come out recently and Let's Go Pikachu as well and obviously just some really nice games I have to say I've got a, a much more use of my Switch than I actually initially expected and the last thing that MPD Group actually noted here which is also impressive that the sales on the eShop have also grown 105% over 2017. So, well done Nintendo. They have done very, very well for themselves, despite being a little bit late to the party when it comes to the release of the Switch. Obviously, the Wii U was never really a competitor at all to either the PS4 or the Xbox One. Let's just be real. That that thing was, you know, you kind of felt a little bit bad. Like, you gave it a bit of a pat on the head. It's like, there, there. It's okay. And obviously, the Switch just came along like... Sorry it took me so long, boys. I'm here now. <laughs> anyway, that's me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.